How's it going everyone? This is Cloud Chief, and in today's video I want to take a couple minutes and talk about Wilds Keep Reeves. Wilds Keep Reeves are essentially a public event that has all the Nicoles in it. Uh, essentially it has the six big NMs for Adelin. While there are items you get for clearing the Wilds Keep Reeves, the main reason that I think you should do Wilds Keep Reeves is your records of eminence and once you clear it you actually get a three percent capacity point bonus so by clearing all six wild keeps reef you can have an 18 percent capacity point bonus which is just really nice especially when you stack that uh, with the other records of eminence with reeves you can just get a very large uh, capacity point bonus which is just really nice you get access to wild keep reeves by getting to adeline mission 1-6 or life on the frontier to get the key item to participate in the wild keep reeves you need to go to E6 in Eastern Adelin and talk to Dimian. From there you can buy the key items that will allow you to enter the wilds keep reeve but it costs you bail. How much bail really depends on your ranking in coalitions and your fame. All of the entrances to the wilds keep reeves are right by the home point crystals for each individual zone. So if you have the home point crystal, you are pretty much right by the wilds keep reeve. All you gotta do is warp there and then you should be able to enter as long as the reeve is up. There is no time limit on reeves. It'll go until the main boss is defeated. Once the main boss is defeated, it takes about three hours for the Wilds Keep Reef to respawn. When there is a Wilds Keep Reef campaign going, I don't know what exactly the time is, but I believe it's around 15 minutes. It might even be less, but it's a significantly quick respawn time. I know when the event's going on, there's definitely people who make parties and pretty much cycle through all the reeves and just keep clearing them over and over again because you get increased rewards and you get guaranteed bail drops plus typically during the campaign it doubles the hp bail you get if you're new to wilds keep reeves i highly recommend that you go and get the reeve unity key item before doing this as it makes it as you're doing the event you will get random buffs it may cure you it may uh, increase your attack and uh, the longer the event goes on the more things you're going to keep accumulating as you, the uh, reeve goes on and this isn't just for wilds keep reeves this does it for any type of reeve so considering these nms can be really tough i highly recommend getting this as it will make life easier to start this quest you just zone into the pioneers coalition one game day after you've already registered uh to be a pioneer after you've done that, you just go out to Sizek Battlegrounds and head to G8 and click on the Earthen Mound and you'll get a cutscene. After that, head to E10, which will be the zone line to Sigates. Once you're inside, just pretty much hug the right wall until you hit E6 and then click on the Foreboding Presence. You'll get a cutscene, after that click it again, you'll get an NM. If you are item level at all, you should have no problem just destroying this NM. Once you defeat the NM, click on the Forboding Presence one more time for a cutscene. Once you're done that, just go back to the Pioneers Coalition, and then you'll get the key item. Now on to the actual fun part, the Wild Keep Reeves itself. So. Like I said, the main point of this is to kill these boss NMs. You're going to enter like a small area, almost like a BCNM area, and there will be a bunch of enemies around. The starting area is typically clear of enemies. If you get hate on any enemy whatsoever, the boss is going to come over to you, which is typically what you want to do. You want to buff up, get ready, pull normal enemy, quickly kill it because the boss is going to be coming and luckily the boss doesn't link with any other enemies but when you have hate he is going to come after you i'm going to talk about general strategies and tips for taking out these nms but i'm not going to go into super details for each nm if you want to get into details about the move sets of the nms and just know all the ins and outs of the nms then i recommend going and checking out the the boss part of my delve videos 
All these NMs have the same exact move sets and do the same thing as the NMs in Delve. A few tips about this. First off, all the NMs do not regain HP in this. So in theory, you could enter this solo, do a little damage to it, die, home point, get another key item, come back, and then do some more damage to it and eventually do that until it dies as long as you had enough bailed. Now I of course don't recommend doing this, but I just want to stress the point that it does not regen HP. Also, because this is a public event, you can summon trusts even if you have hate. So if you have a healer trust and they run out of HP, you are free to go ahead and disengage, dismiss them, and then resummon another healer. So we will of course have full HP and then re-engage to keep the fight going. Just note you do have to worry about uh, trust timers. The first three NMs, the B, the Shark, and the T-Rex, all are pretty easy. I was actually able to solo them with my mule on Warrior without too much difficulty. Just some quick tips for the first three NMs, not going to go into extensive details. There's not much really to say about the B except for that he can get a ton of shadows, so having some type of AoE to strip the shadows will make life easier. The Shark, once he gets his aura, he can do a move. So if you're between like 6 and 20 Yalms and it does uh, its Mayhem TP move, you will instantly die. You either need to be right up next to it or really far away. As for the T-Rex, the only real threatening thing is he can do is he has some TP move that can actually make you weaken for a little bit of time. So just watch your HP if that lands. So now on to the last three NMs. The tree, the bird, and the tiger. Now, the bird I was actually able to take with my mule. The thing is, I needed to have Shantato there, and we were doing gravitation skill chains, and then she was magic bursting with stone, which was consistently keeping the aura down. I was able to solo it from 100% to dead, although I did wipe once because I got caught up doing something else. It got the aura, and then it ended up eventually taking me down before I was able to drop its aura because it starts hitting much harder. As for the tree and tiger, I was not able to solo them on my mule using a melee job. However, I was able to solo them on my main using scholar. Pretty much I set up a party with a tank, a healer, and then a bunch of black mage trusts. And pretty much all I did was keep popping off the skill chains that I know that the mob is weak to and would drop its aura. So for the tree, that's wind. For the bird, that's earth. And for the tiger, that's fire. Uh, by doing this, I was able to solo the tree down on uh, my scholar with no issues. He never got the doom aura when I did this. As for the tiger, I've had problems dropping his aura. And while his aura is annoying because having a uh, paralysis aura can just be frustrating because you're just constantly getting paralyzed and you can't really take it off, I was able to take him down using the same strategy. Essentially, I just made sure I was standing out of range. Of course, my trusts were getting paralyzed, but I would just, uh, you know, skill chain and magic burst using fusion and fire spells and was able to burn it down. So I was able to go through and solo every single one of these wild keep reads. So if nothing else, you can get one or two friends and go ahead and do it. And that's actually not a bad idea is to get some friends to help you out. But if you're gonna get friends, everyone should be in their own party so that way you all have trust. You go in with three people. If you all can summon six trust, you're essentially going in with 18 people. Plus since you can keep resummoning your trust, there's no reason you can't keep your party stable. So this is my recommendations for taking out these wild keep reeds. There's definitely value in doing it. You can get some, you know, decent items from it. Some of the items are outdated, but there are still some really good items you can get from this. So definitely check it out. Thank you for the supporting the channel. Uh, thank you for supporting me and may you have success in all you do.